Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. The legacy of slavery in the United States lives on today in South Carolina and Georgia. The Gullah Geechee peoples, descendants of African slaves, are facing a struggle to hold on to their land and culture. Up and down this coast, there were literally thousands of African descendants. I'm John Herman Blake. I'm a seventh generation descendant of a woman who was enslaved on an island in the Savannah River on a rice plantation. Most of them came from West Africa, Sierra Leone and Gambia. It really began about the 18th century as the Atlantic slave trade began to prosper as people began to acquire property here who saw the potential for growing rice and cotton. And they began to import Africans who were enslaved on plantations. You could buy a plantation, buy 10, 20 slaves, and within three to five years, have a complete return on your investment. Dr. Blake is executive director of the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor Commission. The Geechee are descendants of slaves who settled in the U.S. state of Georgia, and the Gullah, known for their masterful storytelling, settled in the neighboring state of South Carolina. I interviewed a woman who was born in the 1880s. She would sit and almost howl as she talked to me saying, oh, what a time, what a time. You got to do what you got to do. 12-year-old girl sell from her mama. You got to do what you got to do. And as you listen, what she was talking about was sexual abuse. That grandmother had to submit to rape and exploitation because that's the only way she could survive. I have a tape of a woman who talks about her mother being a breeder. And she said her mother's owner, who was a woman, said she hold her because she was a mother having babies. And he warned her. She didn't let her do no kind of a work in the field, but she was having children. And, and, I, and I'm the baby of the 15. It was cheaper to have babies born and enslaved than to purchase, particularly when you didn't know what you might get, whether they would be docile or not. Many slaves fought for their freedom when the American Civil War broke out in 1861. The war pitted the pro-slavery southern states whose economy was built on the back of enslaved labor against the northern states and eventually led to the abolition of slavery. I am Victoria Smalls from St. Helena Island. I work here at Penn Center as the Director of History, Art and Culture. Penn Center was founded as Penn School in 1862 for the freedmen, the people that were enslaved here in the Sea Islands of South Carolina. And the school was founded so that those people could be self-sufficient in their lives, to be educated, not only just to be educated in the academics, but also in the trades. And also knowledge of knowing that land ownership was very, very important. And with those three things, your academics, your trades and land ownership that you would truly be free. Dr. Martin Luther King came here numerous times in the 60s and along with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference to help strategize the civil rights movement. It was a very hard time for them and they were under threat 
constantly. So to be able to get away from it all and come for a respite was very important. One of the buildings that are here on the campus, Gantt Cottage, is where he resided during his stays here from 1963 all the way through 1968. Martin Luther King, as you may well know, came from a middle-class, rather uh, privileged African-American family and had not experienced poverty or deprivation and saw for the first time very much up close what poverty does to people. And that was an inspiration for him. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. embraced the Gullah people and their culture, which was distinct from any other in the area. In order to preserve this unique culture and ensure the rights of the Gullah Geechee peoples, the United Nations launched an international decade for people of African descent in January 2015. The decade aims to recognize their contribution, preserve their rich cultural heritage, and bring an end to discrimination. What a wonderful thing that the United Nations has embarked upon, and it fills us with a lot of pride and dignity as Gullah people. Some of the tradition that we brought over with us from Africa, very, very important to keep it going. It's already evident that some things within the Gullah culture are starting to slowly fade away. When you have sweetgrass basket sowers that are unable to find the sweetgrass because of rapid development in those coastal areas where it grows, it's very scarce. Penn Center is trying to help with that. Our mission is to promote and preserve the history and culture of the Sea Islands. Mr. Joseph Cripp Legree, he's one of the last cast net makers on our island. And so we are trying to offer that as a class at Penn Center to help promote and preserve that. So I wash my hand, I wash my hand, see you know what me. Penn Center is trying to keep that alive. Besides a fading culture, the Gullah Geechee communities face another challenge. Their inherited coastal lands have attracted the attention of developers, a phenomenon that Dr. Blake struggles to accept. Some people thought, well, they'll build resorts and golf courses, and people started coming to play golf and live on the beach, and it kept growing. Defusky is one of hundreds of islands that make up the Gullah inherited lands. When I first got involved with Defusky, we had to work with an elderly woman who had inherited all of her property. And somebody came along and said, I want an acre of your land. She sold an acre of land for $75. $75. We had to get a lawyer and get that thing reversed. And she said, I didn't know how much it was worth. A lot of people who are Gullah or Geechee and originated on these islands had to leave for economic reasons. The people lived their lives planting, fishing, important ways until it was discovered. Developers went after it and people used to come here to hunt. And it kept growing, and the more profitable it became, the more they became. Well, that's what's happened on Defusky. I don't think this culture of Gullah Geechee people, in terms of its deep, deep values, has been ever truly understood. I think it will be very important for building human community.